Hi guys. Today we'll be recapping a story called A Requiem for the Queen. Please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. As it really helps our channel grow thanks. People of the nation raised the slogan against Queen Gloria de Lua, the Queen of the Lua Kingdom. They all said about the queen that kill her. Kill the queen who turned the kingdom into hell and offer her blood to the gods. Bring down the evil witch, the servants of Queen Gloria de Lua said. Do something, your majesty. We don't have any time. Your majesty, Queen Gloria de Lua said. Are they trying to survive by throwing me into the mob? The people of this nation, and even those who were once my subordinates, if only in name, are abandoning me. How pathetic, Duke Ferdinand said. Didn't you say that you would sacrifice your life for the kingdom? Just as I thought, you nobles only give lip service. Show them your dignity as their queen, your majesty, Queen Gloria de Lua said. Duke Ferdinand, Duke Ferdinand said. Well, I'll go first then, infinite heavenly glory to the one who soars the highest, Queen Gloria de Lua thought. How twisted is my fate. My biggest enemy is the only one standing up for me. When Ferdinand came in front of the people, they said, A nobleman appeared. The nobles destroyed our lives. He's the queen's loyal dog. Kill him. Throw stones at him, Queen Gloria de Lua said. No, people threw stones at Ferdinand and again said, Kill him, Ferdinand said. Your majesty, the palace gate has collapsed. You have to make your decision now. Damn it, at this rate, we'll all die. Queen Gloria de Lua said that she would go outside. The servant said, A are you sure, your majesty? Isn't that what you all want? Queen Gloria de Lua said. Well then, and to her nation. See you all in hell. With every step I take forward, the people said. A pitch black fear blocks my path. There's the queen. It's the queen who sold her soul to the devil. Kill her. Not being a good ruler is also a sin. I have sinned by not stopping this disaster, even though I knew it would happen. Nalaya de Lua, princess of the Lua kingdom, woke up after sleep. Nalaya de Lua thought. I had a dream about my ancestor again. Queen Nalaya de Lua became angry and said, I'm so tired because I keep having nightmares every night. A maid said to the queen, Your Highness, you didn't sleep well again? How about you cancel your class today? Queen Nalaya de Lua said, No, I'm all right. I can handle a nightmare. Make me look more like an adult, the maid said. Yes, your highness, Reynold La Aspera, the head of House Aspera, came and said. I can't believe the kingdom's princess secretly goes to a gambling house at night. Such a wonderful job you're doing, your highness, Queen Nalaya de Lua thought. I tripled my money, though. Of all people, why did I have to get caught by Duke Aspera? He's the lord of House Aspera the house that focused on building wealth rather than political influence, and my smart and annoying teacher in the disciplines of kingship, Queen Nalaya thought. I heard that he was a very intelligent person who studied abroad for three years, but I suppose even intelligent people nag, Queen Nalaya asked. How did you know I was at the gambling house? Are you secretly watching me or something? Reynold came close to Nalaya de Lua and politely said, Well, I'm always watching over you. Queen Nalaya de Lua was shocked at such behavior and asked. You're kidding, right? Reynold said. Yes, so let's get back to our class, Queen Nalaya de Lua thought. That was such a bad joke. Queen Nalaya de Lua opened a book and saw the front page, thinking about the queen. She thought. The era of Queen Gloria again? Nalaya de Lua thought about Queen Gloria de Lua. She was a frustrating ancestor of mine who was ignored by the nobility and the people. She had to fight against her only remaining blood relative, her little brother, who was her biggest political enemy. Moreover, she couldn't even convey her feelings to the person she loved. Queen Nalaya de Lua was surprised and thought. How do I know all of that, you ask? Queen Nalaya said to herself. Because lately, whenever I dream, I become Gloria. Why do you talk about Queen Gloria so often? I don't really like that era if I'm honest, Reynolds said. Well... You're going to need that information soon, Queen Nalaya asked. What do you mean? Reynolds said. You'll know when the time comes, Queen Nalaya said. What does he mean by that? Reynolds took the book from Queen Nalaya's hand and said. All right, let's focus now. 
On the next page, Queen Malaya became angry and thought, Was he just messing with me again? After some time, Queen Malaya went to her bed and thought, Am I having the same dream again? But for some reason, my body feels so heavy. It's as if someone is pressing down on me. There's an assassin. Queen Malaya felt a man, covered his face, pulled down at her in order to kill her, and the man succeeded in his mission. The queen is dead. The maid and servant hurriedly came to her room and became afraid upon seeing her dead body. The maid said, Wake up, your highness, Queen Malaya thought. This is just a dream, anyway. I hope I wake up soon, some said. Bring the royal physician here right now, Queen Malaya thought. Our dreams usually this vivid. The next morning, when Queen Malaya saw her face in the mirror, she was shocked and said, What's this? Why do I see Gloria in the mirror? Queen Malaya said. Wait, am I still dreaming? But this feels too real for it to be a dream, and the place where I've been stabbed aches. Assuming that she was no longer in a dream, Queen Malaya said. I must be Gloria right now. But how does that make any sense? Did I take over her body like they do in novels? First, let me calm down. There has to be a way to return to my body. Since this may be the real world and not just a dream, I need to lay low as much as possible while I look for a way to return. By seeing an ancient picture in the book, Queen Malaya said, Gloria was a queen with little influence, so I should be able to stay unnoticed. Suddenly, a maid came and said, Your Highness! Chief Justice Jillian has requested an audience with you, Queen Malaya said. What right now? Let him in. I hope nothing bad happens. Lucius La Jillian, a member of the Queen's faction, formerly the nobility faction, entered. After looking at him, Queen Malaya thought. I've seen this man in my dreams about Gloria. He was the third son of House Jillian and a genius who became the Chief Justice at a young age. But above all, he was the subject of Queen Gloria's unrequited love. But why is my heart pounding? Queen Malaya asked. What brings you? Queen Malaya's foot slipped at that time, and Lucius La Jillian held her hand. Lucius said, Are you all right, your majesty? Queen Malaya said. Oh yes, I am fine. Haven't I told you too to have your rendezvous? Duke Ferdinand said. In a place where no one can see you. He bears an uncanny resemblance to Duke Espera. Well, of course, my teacher is not as rude as this guy. Since your family will support me 100 years from now, I'll forgive your rudeness just this once, Malaya de Lua said. What brings you here, Duke Ferdinand? Duke Ferdinand said. Before I get to that, how about you give us some privacy, Chief Justice Jillian? Her Majesty may like having you here, but that's not the case for me. Queen Malaya said. Well, Lucius said. Your words are rather harsh, Duke Ferdinand, Queen Malaya said. Wait, why is he acting like this? This will only attract people's attention, Queen Malaya said. I want to lay low until I can return. I don't want any strange rumors to spread. What would Gloria have said if she were here, Queen Malaya said. Think, Malaya, think, Duke Ferdinand said. I'm sorry to come here and cause trouble when you only just woke up but the memorial ceremony matter is quite urgent, Queen Malaya said. The memorial ceremony? What is he talking about? What is he talking about? Chief Justice Jillian, would you give us a moment? Lucius said. Yes, your majesty, Queen Malaya said. I've sent this one away, but handling the other one won't be easy. Why did you do that? Duke Ferdinand said. Are you aware that the memorial ceremony is being delayed because of your actions? Queen Malaya said. How would I know? I already gave you a report. You didn't forget, did you? Queen Malaya thought. His attitude is getting on my nerves. Is that the right attitude to have toward the queen? You really messed things up, Gloria, Duke Ferdinand said. You have a mouth, so say something. Is he picking a fight with me? Queen Malaya said. I'm surprised you're picking a fight with the queen who just woke up after being attacked, Duke Ferdinand said. I'm saying this to you because you suffered an attack. The balance of power has collapsed, Queen Malaya said. You should at least make an official statement regarding the prince. Ak. Is this about the succession to the throne? Duke Ferdinand said. The memorial ceremony is also an issue. Freeze. Is there a reason you wish to simplify the event that honors the late king? Queen Malaya said. I don't know either. 
Why does he keep asking questions I can't answer? Queen Malaya thought. Even the way he flusters me is just like Duke Aspera. I wish I could smack them both just once. Then, would my method to escape Duke Aspera also work on him? Ugh, my head, Duke Ferdinand said. I'm sorry, Duke Ferdinand. I suddenly feel dizzy. You are still recovering, Queen Malaya thought. It worked, Duke Ferdinand said. Then I'll come back to discuss the rest later, and take my leave for now. I have to come up with a solution quickly, Queen Malaya said. Whether this is a dream or not, until I find a way to return, I should at least study the events surrounding Queen Gloria, Queen Malaya thought. I should at least study the events surrounding Queen Gloria. Come to think of it, I think she kept a diary. It should be in her desk's drawer. Here it is, Queen Malaya became happy and said. I found Gloria's diary. I can read this in one day, Queen Malaya said. Why does my name appear in her diary? Queen Malaya took the diary and started reading from the first page, where she read the message of Queen Gloria de Lua, who wrote that. I thought you might be confused, so I wrote down what happened so far in this diary. I sincerely hope you read it. August 21st, year 354. I had a terrible nightmare that I hoped I'd never have again. Eight months later, May 3rd, year 355. While browsing through several books, I found an interesting story. I learned that there is magic only those with royal blood can use. Restoring the wish stone has been a challenge, but I may have found a way to resolve the issue. Isn't that a legendary secret treasure of the Lua royal family? That grants the wish of the person who holds it, Queen Malaya thought. So it was already broken in this era? Seven months later, December 21st, year 355. Is it really possible to connect my soul to whichever person I want? If this travel magic is real, I may be able to find someone who can restore the wish stone, such as a high priest. A part of the information is missing, but it's still worth a try. Six months later, July 9th, year 356. I successfully activated the travel magic. But why is it that while I was looking for a high priest who could help restore the wish stone, Queen Malaya thought, my soul connected to that of a princess living 100 years in the future instead? Seeing the world 100 years from now is interesting, but that's not what's important to me right now, unless I acquire the ability to stop that incident from happening. I must restore the wish stone as quickly as possible to turn back time and prevent my father's unexpected death. So she wanted to use the wish stone to turn back time. I didn't know that was possible. If my father returns, I'll be able to stop the red hell that plunged. Seven months later, March 5th, year 357. I barely survived a near-death incident. I feel bad that she had to experience an assassination attempt due to the side effects of the magic, Queen Malaya thought. But how do I get rid of these side effects? It clearly stated only the caster of the spell could see the life of the person connected to them. Two days later, March 7th, year 357. I activated the travel magic again, but I kept getting connected to the princess. Why? Could it be that she holds the key to the problem? March 8th, year 357. A problem occurred. Perhaps the attack disrupted our soul connection, but the more she crosses over, the more I feel myself getting weaker. So the nightmares I was having weren't just dreams. Three days later, March 11th, year 357. After a difficult search, I've found a solution, but it has only led me to despair. Why do I always have to sacrifice myself? No matter how much I look, there seems to be no other way. Either she or I have to disappear. I don't want to die, but... I must sacrifice myself for the greater good. If I live, the nightmare will continue, but if she lives... At least there's a glimmer of hope. Let me be brave. I'm just leaving a little bit earlier than my predestined death. I lived as a scarecrow for three years, but for the first and last time, I'm finally making a decision worthy of a queen. Therefore, rather than feeling aggrieved by my early death, I should feel sorry for involving her in this mess. Yes, that's it. Six days later, March 17th. Year 357. To summarize the current situation for your reference once you take over my body, if either party suffers a major shock in their life, both parties are affected, and one of them perishes. The moment you take over my body, my poor soul will slowly dissipate without even reaching the heavens. 
I'm sorry for dragging you, an innocent person, into this. I'm sure you're very confused, but don't worry. And you will be able to return to the world you came from. Since you were caught up in this situation without warning, I have left you a gift in a secret space in the study. If you press the eagle's eye, carved on the northern wall of my study, you will find the wish stone there. To think the wish stone was hidden here. Although not perfect, three of the six pieces have been restored. If you restore the remaining three pieces with the help of the high priests, your one wish will be granted. Malaya, I can only ask for your forgiveness, but I would like to make a request using the wish stone as collateral. There's a child who lost both his parents and siblings at a young age, and is alone in the world. His name is Edward DeLua. Please take good care of my younger brother Eddie. And I leave the kingdom in your care. I am truly sorry for giving you such a heavy burden to bear. Lastly, I really want to tell you this. Don't be afraid. I will endure the good and the bad with you, Queen Malaya said. First, someone tried to kill her, and now her soul is disappearing, yet she still worries about her brother? I feel sorry for her. No, wait, I am the most pitiful one. I was brought into all this against my will. Anyway, to summarize the situation, 100 years ago, the queen connected her soul to mine using travel magic, while trying to restore the wish stone. And as a result of the attempted assassination of Queen Gloria, and the side effects of travel magic, the queen's soul was extinguished, Queen Malaya said. In three years' time, her soul will completely dissipate. In other words, my soul is bound to this body for the coming three years. Moreover, if something were to happen to the queen's body within those three years, it would also affect my own body 100 years in the future. That means from now on, I have to ensure the safety of Gloria, the queen who is ignored by both the nobles and her only family and political enemy, her younger brother, for a whopping three whole years. Or I could return to my world by restoring the wish stone. I'm tired from thinking so much. I wish everything would magically resolve itself once I woke up from a nap. A maid came and said, Your Majesty, Duke Ferdinand wants to meet you. Queen Malaya said, Not that annoying and difficult Duke again. Could you please tell him to wait a moment? And I'd like you to help me get ready. He's not even giving me a moment to catch my breath, Duke Ferdinand said. I'm sorry for my sudden visit, Your Majesty. Queen Malaya said, What brings you here, Duke Ferdinand? Duke Ferdinand said, I forgot that there were some documents that needed approval today, Queen Malaya said. He came back just to get some paperwork approved? Duke Ferdinand said, Please take a look and sign at the bottom. Queen Malaya said, Wait, I need to sign this? Queen Malaya thought, But I haven't studied Gloria's handwriting yet. Let me try to remember. How did Gloria sign documents in the dreams again? She definitely used her left hand, the signet ring with the royal emblem engraved on it. She dropped wax on a document and pressed that ring into it. She doesn't use a quill pen. Duke Ferdinand. Did he tell me to sign the documents on purpose? Does he suspect that I'm not Queen Gloria? Duke Ferdinand said. I'm glad you're feeling good enough to get distracted with other thoughts. But would you be so kind as to approve of these quickly? It's urgent, you see. Queen Malaya said. Certainly. I'll do it right away. No, there's no way he realized. I haven't made any glaring mistakes. And how many people would actually believe that a person's body can be taken over by someone else's soul? However, why do his eyes send shivers down my spine? Queen Malaya said. Here you go. Is there anything else I need to approve? Duke Ferdinand said. No, that's all for today. Your Majesty, do you remember the promise you made to me in the past? Queen Malaya thought. What's he talking about now? A promise? You asked me to remain neutral, to save your Majesty and His Highness. Queen Malaya said. Of course I remember. Duke Ferdinand said. Then you must also remember what I said back then. I asked why. I would have to do that for a queen who has no power, Queen Malaya said. Of course, Duke Ferdinand said. Do you also remember that you invited me to dinner today? Queen Malaya asked. To dinner? I see you forgot. I figured as much, so I instructed the servants to prepare in advance. Well then, let's go, Queen Malaya thought. 
Is he telling me the truth or is he testing me? His words flow like water, so I don't even have a chance to refute them. This is dangerous. He'll definitely suspect something during this dinner. Even if I master the rules of etiquette, there's no way I can perfectly pull off the etiquette of 100 years ago. I don't know anymore. I'll just deny it until the very end. What can he possibly do to a queen? He won't find any definitive evidence. Ugh, I can feel his gaze, Duke Ferdinand said. The dessert is very tasty. You should have some, your majesty, Queen Malaya said. No, thank you, Duke Ferdinand said. Come on, just a bite. Dessert after dinner is essential, wouldn't you agree? Queen Malaya thought. What is he up to now? Is this a trap or just an innocent suggestion? I probably shouldn't eat it, Duke Ferdinand said. Are you afraid I might have done something to it? Queen Malaya said. No, it's not that, Duke Ferdinand said. Everyone leave. Queen Malaya became shocked at his words. Have you heard, your majesty? People say that magic existed in the world before this country was founded. Long, long ago, there was a young man who lived in a village. He was hardworking and had a great character. So many women wanted his love, but he rejected them all. It was because he was already in love with a mysterious woman who had suddenly appeared in the village one day. However, the young man's marriage proposal was rejected. When he became sick after having his heart broken, the woman came to him and said, I want to accept your feelings, but I can't do that because I'm from another time. Another time? Nevertheless, the young man loved her, and they eventually became lovers and even started a family. Before the woman returned to her world, she taught the young man a magic spell. It was magic that allowed him to find whoever he wanted, Queen Malaya thought. It's the magic Queen Gloria used, Duke Ferdinand continued his story and said. The young man occasionally used the magic to check if the woman was safe, and it was passed down to the only child the woman had left behind. After that, it continued to be passed down for generations, and one of his descendants founded a kingdom, Duke Ferdinand said. The Lua Kingdom, that is, Queen Malaya said. Our kingdom? Duke Ferdinand said. Yes, that's right. Well, it's a common tale, but as I recalled the story, I became curious about one thing. May I ask your majesty for the answer? Queen Malaya said. Ask me? What do you? Duke Ferdinand said. Who are you? What do I do now? Your manner of speech, your way of walking, your food preferences. None of those match the Queen Gloria I know. Moreover, you never once requested my neutrality, let alone saving you and the prince, Queen Malaya said. What nonsense are you talking about now, Duke Ferdinand said. To be honest, it doesn't matter whether Her Majesty is dead or alive, Queen Malaya said. What, Duke Ferdinand said. However, I still need the presence of the body you've taken over. So please cooperate with me. If you do, I will turn a blind eye to your true identity. Of course, if you refuse my offer, I will consider you an enemy. And when that happens, well, you already know what that spells for you then, right? I'll take my leave now. It would be best for you to decide as quickly as possible. A cooperation, a servant said. Your Majesty, Duke Ferdinand has arrived, Queen Malaya said. All of you can leave after letting him in. I have agonized for days but I think the method suggested by Gloria is the only way to return home. At this point, I have no choice but to accept reality. However, Gloria, I still don't trust everything you said just yet. I won't believe anything until I find out for myself. And, we'll see if you can mistreat me again today, Duke Ferdinand, Duke Ferdinand said. It's been three days. You took longer than I expected. So have you made up your mind? Queen Malaya said. I will accept your offer. However, there are conditions, Duke Ferdinand said. I don't think you're in a position to negotiate with me, Queen Malaya said. Well, is that truly the case? You're a member of the neutral faction, so you don't just need me. My presence is a must. Having the queen pass down her throne peacefully to the prince is crucial for you to maintain your neutrality. If Gloria had even thought about protecting her power, she wouldn't have been attacked in the first place. She could have secured her own power by marrying a royal from another country, or used another even more reliable way. The queen had several options to resolve her situation, 
and now they are all in my hands, Duke Ferdinand said. What do you want to say? Queen Malaya said. Unlike the queen, I plan to utilize all of my options. Most importantly, we need each other. I want to make a deal with you as partners on equal footing. I would appreciate it if you not only turned a blind eye to my true identity, but also treated me as a flawless queen, Duke Ferdinand asked. You still have more to say, Queen Malaya said. How rude of you, Duke Ferdinand, Duke Ferdinand said. What? Queen Malaya said. Didn't you just promise me that you would treat me like a flawless queen? It's time for me to see what he is made of, Duke Ferdinand said. I offer my humble homage to the one who soars the highest. I... Ernesto La Ferdinand, greet your majesty, the most noble queen, Duke Ferdinand said. Queen Nalaya responded. I'm satisfied. Well then, there is something you must do for me now. Please get rid of the prince, Duke Ferdinand, taken aback, asked. What do you, Queen Nalaya continued. Given that someone tried to assassinate the queen in her bedroom, it seems Queen Gloria's power is almost non-existent. How do you stay neutral when the power is out of balance? To restore your majesty's power, Duke Ferdinand interjected. I suppose temporarily making your only political enemy, the prince, disappear would be a good method, thinking to herself, Queen Malaya noted. It's a shame that he catches on so fast. I wanted to tease him more. But it was nice to see the shocked look on his face even for just a moment, Queen Malaya said. That's right. The neutral faction and the prince's faction will rise, and if I don't do anything... I'll most likely be stabbed to death. Therefore, I have to make the prince disappear for a little while. I am different from the weak Gloria. If anyone tries to harm me, I'll fight back with all I've got, Duke Ferdinand corrected. Wrong. I understand that it is important for me to learn the etiquette of this era, Queen Malaya replied. Duke Ferdinand, if I keep getting it wrong, then why don't you teach me properly instead of just getting angry with me? You could show me how it's done yourself, for instance, Duke Ferdinand agreed. Well, all right. The angle of your wrist should be, no, he's simply giving me a lesson, Queen Malaya thought. Isn't he too close to me? Queen Malaya said. Yes, just like that, Duke Ferdinand praised. Good job. Don't tell me you're feeling uncomfortable after you asked me to show you how it's done yourself, Queen Malaya retorted in her thoughts. Of course I feel uncomfortable. No one has ever dared to touch my body, reflecting, Queen Malaya thought. I can't believe I jumped in surprise after I could feel his breath on my ear, Duke Ferdinand announced. That's enough etiquette lessons for today, so, Queen Malaya interrupted. No. Do you think I'll just let you leave like this? Duke Ferdinand asked. You want me to teach you how to dance? Queen Malaya affirmed. Yes. I'm resting right now under the pretext of recovery but I'll have to dance sometime in the future, won't I? I believe you have an ulterior motive, huh? Wondering why he was being so obedient, Queen Nalaya thought. I was going to use dancing as an excuse to stomp on his feet, but now I feel bad, Duke Ferdinand teased. Are you trying to act like a log? Queen Nalaya retorted. What did you just say? Duke Ferdinand replied. I was thinking that even a log wouldn't be as stiff as you. Did your dance teacher ever point that out to you? Queen Malaya thought to herself. Ha, I can't believe him, she said. Oh my. I'm sorry. I'm confused because the steps are different from what I learned before, Duke Ferdinand reassured. It's all right. Logs usually step on their partner's toes, Duke Ferdinand said. Oh, I mixed up the steps again, Queen Malaya exclaimed. Oh no. Not again. I'm so sorry, Duke Ferdinand. Observing his resilience, Queen Malaya thought. He's not even letting out a groan, huh? I'm losing my balance, Duke Ferdinand advised. You should be more careful. Let's end today's lesson here. If you're good enough to step on my toes on purpose, you probably don't need to learn how to dance. Don't think I didn't see you sneakily pull out your foot just at the right time, Queen Malaya reflected. It hurts my pride that I'm the only one who is worked up. Why is he walking so awkwardly? Is there something wrong with his foo? Oh, no wonder. I was thinking his shoes were made of iron. Seeing him suffer is making me feel better somehow, Lucius arrived and said to Queen Malaya. Greetings, your majesty. 
We have rendered a verdict against the knights of the royal guard, Queen Malaya thought. Is he talking about the knights who were present during the assassination attempt? Queen Malaya said. For your majesty's order, all members have been placed in detention. Thinking it was just detention, Queen Malaya reflected. She almost got killed in her bedchamber, which should have been under the heaviest security. Gloria, it's no wonder people disregard you, Queen Malaya said. While I mandated detention, it is a milder punishment than what the law stipulates. Didn't any of the judges have a problem with that? Lucius replied. How could they protest? Queen Malaya stated. It was your majesty's order. Surprised by the lack of protest, Queen Malaya thought. Oh, I thought they would scoff at me. Looking at his face, it doesn't seem like he's lying. It seems the royal family's inherent authority is still being respected. Perhaps I can do more with Gloria's power than I thought. I might be able to restore the wish stone faster than I thought. Reflecting on what Queen Gloria had said, Queen Malaya thought. Queen Gloria said her soul connected to me when she was trying to find a high priest to help her, right? Perhaps there's something I can do since a high priest once told me this. Your Highness was bestowed with a unique love from God. If I want to find out if I'm special or restore the wish stone, I first need to see a high priest. It will be difficult to take action without the nobles and other countries noticing. I need someone to act as my right-hand man. A maid entered and announced, Your Majesty, Countess Letitia has returned to the palace, Queen Malaya said. It seems an important guest has arrived, Letitia greeted. Glory to the one who soars the highest. I, Serafina Su Letitia, greet your majesty, the most noble queen. You're finally here, Countess Letitia, Queen Malaya reflected. She's Gloria's old nanny and the head maid in charge of the main palace. The only problem is, Letitia introduced. This is my daughter Chloe, Chloe greeted. I, Chloe Su Letitia, greet your majesty, the most noble queen, Queen Malaya responded. Nice to meet you, Lady Chloe, Chloe replied. Likewise, your majesty, Letitia said. I heard that you went through an unfortunate experience, Queen Malaya said. I'm not quite sure since we haven't found the culprit yet. Well, to be honest, no one seems interested in catching the culprit, Letitia responded. If someone broke into your bedchamber, they must have gotten help from the inside. What happened to the palace staff, Queen Malaya explained. For now, they're all in detention, but I will release them soon, Letitia thought. Since that is what everyone wants, Queen Malaya thought. I said that to test her, but her momentary agitation doesn't tell me much. I knew she wouldn't be easy to figure out, but Queen Malaya then asked. Lady Chloe, do you have something to say? Chloe said. Well, I've been wanting to tell you that. You're truly beautiful, your majesty. You look just like a doll. I love your style. You possess such lustrous, shiny blonde hair. I thought hair like that only existed in novels. And your majesty's purple eyes look like jewels. They're so pretty and mysterious, and Letitia interrupted. Chloe, stop it. You're distressing her majesty, Chloe added. If I'd become your majesty's lady-in-waiting, I'd be able to do your hair and makeup, wouldn't I? I could also pick out your clothes and help you get dressed. Oh my, I'm so excited. Just imagining it makes me happy, Letitia apologized. Your Majesty, I apologize for my daughter's rude behavior. Would you excuse me for a moment? Queen Nalaya responded. Pardon? Oh, yes. Go ahead, Letitia scolded Chloe outside. Chloe, come outside right now, Chloe exclaimed. Ack. Mother, I am sorry. A few moments later, Letitia returned and said, I apologize, your majesty. I failed to educate my daughter properly. Please punish me for what my child has done, Queen Malaya reassured. No, it's all right. It's truly no big deal. To be honest, I enjoyed seeing that side of you. For the first time, I felt a little closer to you, Letitia replied. I have no one else beside me right now, Queen Malaya said. While maybe not to the extent you treat your daughter, I'd like you to feel more at ease in my company, Letitia thought. Did I hook her? I see. I had no idea your majesty thought that way. Please punish me for not caring for you properly, Queen Malaya said. There you go again. 
I just asked you to be more relaxed around me. Or do you not like that I'm acting this way? Letitia assured. Absolutely not. Your wish is my command, your majesty, Letitia added. I have been away from the palace for too long. I should get back to work as soon as possible, Queen Nalaya responded. Of course. I already feel much safer now that you're coming back, Queen Nalaya then heard. Your majesty. Wake up, your majesty, Chloe said. Did you sleep well? Queen Nalaya, startled, replied. Lady Chloe? What are you doing in my bedchamber? Chloe explained. I've been appointed as your majesty's lady-in-waiting as of today. I came in to wake you up. I didn't mean to surprise you. I'm sorry, your majesty. Did I startle you? Queen Malaya said. It's all right. But perhaps you can wake me up a different way next time, Chloe said. Your majesty, Duke Ferdinand requests an audience with you, Queen Malaya asked. At this hour? What could be so urgent? Duke Ferdinand arrived and said. You seem to be in a good mood today, your majesty. I heard that Countess Letitia returned to the palace yesterday. I assume things went well with her, Queen Malaya replied. Yes, well, I suppose you could say that. Recalling the day he was limping, Queen Malaya asked. By the way, what brings you here so early? Duke Ferdinand answered. Oh, it's nothing serious. I just stopped by to inform you that the date of the memorial service has been confirmed, Queen Malaya thought. It's in three days. A separate message will be sent to His Highness, Prince Edward. As you'll be alone with His Highness while you mourn the passing of the late king, you should be extra careful. We have an ultimate goal, after all. In three days, hmm? Until then, I'll have to contend with a lot of work and surveillance, Duke Ferdinand asked. Are you displeased with something? Queen Malaya replied. No, it's just that contemplating the future feels a bit suffocating. I've only been working since I came here. I haven't even seen the capital, Duke Ferdinand suggested. Then shall we go? I'll take you sightseeing around the capital, Queen Malaya exclaimed. Wow. It looks nothing like how it looks 100 years from now, Queen Malaya said. We've arrived. Where are we? Duke Ferdinand responded. We're in the center of the noble district. If we walk a bit in that direction, we'll reach the central square, Queen Malaya suggested. Then let's go there first, Duke Ferdinand agreed. All right. Please follow me, Lady Annabel Clements, the second daughter-in-law of Baron Clements, said. Oh my. Hello, Your Grace. I didn't expect to run into you here. How nice to see you. What brings you to the jewelry store? Duke Ferdinand replied. I was just in the area and decided to stop by. But do I know you? Annabel responded. By the way, who is the lady you're with? Queen Malaya thought. Hopefully, she doesn't recognize me, Duke Ferdinand said. Lady Clements, you're being rather nosy. Am I obligated to answer that question? Annabel apologized. My apologies. Please excuse my rudeness, Duke Ferdinand asked. Do you see anything you like? You seem interested in this one. Why don't you try it on? Duke Ferdinand then said. Please excuse me for a moment, Queen Malaya asked. What are you going to do if rumors circulate in high society? Duke Ferdinand replied. Well, that's what I'm hoping for, Duke Ferdinand continued. Anyway, do you like the jewel you were looking at earlier? Queen Malaya said. Yes, well, it's all right, Duke Ferdinand remarked. Good. It seems my intended goal has roughly been achieved, Queen Malaya questioned. A disguise? I have to disguise myself as a man, Lady Annabel Clements said. Hello, Queen Malaya thought. Why did we come back to this place? What if they see through our disguise, Queen Malaya noted. Ha, his alias is Sincerus? But his very existence is a lie, Duke Ferdinand greeted. Oh, how nice to see you, Madam Clements, Queen Malaya thought. They seem to know each other quite well, Lady Annabel Clements asked. Didn't you say you had a close relationship with Duke Ferdinand? Duke Ferdinand responded. Yes, but why do you ask? Lady Annabel said. His grace was here just a moment ago. Moreover, he had a mysterious woman with him, Lady Annabel thought. Oh, is that so? I actually thought he would be the one to marry Her Majesty, Queen Malaya thought. However, 
it seems Duke Jillian's oldest son, Lord Kraus, is a more likely candidate now. I see this is not the first time he has come here in disguise, Queen Lilia thought. Wait, is he into men? And why does he come to this jewelry store so often? Is he creating a secret fund? Or is he laundering money? A few moments later, Queen Lilia said. I felt like I was watching a scene out of a play. I can't believe someone as blunt as you was being so friendly with people, Queen Melaya asked. And what kind of alias is that? Duke Ferdinand responded. You don't like my second name? Queen Melaya said. Sincerus? The name raises many suspicions. And based on the way you were acting in there, are you perhaps? Duke Ferdinand said. I'm not into men, so don't stare at me like that, Queen Melaya asked. Then what was all that talk about? Duke Ferdinand thought. They even said there were others, Duke Ferdinand said. I didn't know you were so interested in me. What an honor, Queen Melaya asked. What are, Duke Ferdinand, while slipping, caught her and said. Are you all right, Queen Melaya said. Oh, yes. Thank you. Do I mean Count Sincerus, Duke Ferdinand said. Well then, shall we go somewhere else now? Since you said you didn't just intend to sightsee, Let's stop by all the places worth visiting, Duke Ferdinand added. Let's go. Did you enjoy today? Queen Melaya said. I don't know, Queen Melaya then said. Well, then I'll leave it in your hands, Queen Melaya thought. Working with him is not an ideal situation, but there's nothing I can do about it right now. I have no choice but to trust this hand, Queen Melaya reflected. The day of the memorial ceremony. It's finally the day of the memorial ceremony. Today marks the beginning of our operation to transfer power to the neutral faction. In the era of Queen Gloria I, the political landscape was dominated by three key factions. The Queen's faction, led by Queen Gloria herself, this faction held power and influence over the kingdom's political affairs. The Prince's faction, led by Prince Edward, Gloria's younger brother, this faction was a major political force and rival to the Queen. The Neutral Faction, a group of nobles and political entities that remained neutral in the power struggle between the Queen and the Prince. However, the balance of power shifted dramatically after an assassination attempt on Queen Gloria. Since that event, Gloria was removed from the center of power, and the Prince's faction gained significant dominance. In this context, Queen Nalaya, or Gloria, was attempting to navigate the complex political situation while maintaining her position. She faced challenges from Prince Edward and needed to carefully manage her interactions with him to avoid detection and potential threats. As Queen Nalaya said to Prince Edward, How have you been? I haven't seen you in a while. Prince Edward remained silent initially, causing Queen Nalaya to think, Why isn't he answering me? When Prince Edward finally spoke, he said, Stop paying attention to me. Queen Nalaya realized that if she didn't handle the situation well, she might face grave consequences and potentially never return to her own time. She resolved to be patient with him. Prince Edward thought to himself, You've been absent from my life for several years, and now, all of a sudden, you're filled with familial love for your younger brother? Why are you pretending like you care? Queen Nalaya reflected on the situation and noted, He's not so easy to deal with, is he? Still, if I want to avoid prying eyes, I have no choice but to deal with him alone. The key to Operation Hide the Baby Eagle is kidnapping the prince. After all, the kidnapped prince will be hidden in a nearby location. And when the prince's faction loses its focus due to his disappearance, we'll wipe out the powerful prince's faction that has been threatening the queen. If this operation succeeds, I'll be safe, and Duke Ferdinand will gain neutrality. Queen Nalaya trying to maintain the conversation with Prince Edward, said, I don't know what you mean. How about we talk some more after the ceremony? Prince Edward responded. There is no need for us to talk further. We should leave now if we don't want to be late, Queen Malaya agreed. Yes, Prince Edward. Lucas La Fiori, Duke Fiori, the head of the prince's faction, captain of the capital guards, and Yasner La Gillian, Duke Gillian, the head of the queen's faction, Gloria's maternal uncle, came and said, Infinite heavenly glory to the one who soars the highest. Greetings, your majesty, the queen said. What brings you all here? I clearly remember saying I wish for a simple ceremony, Lucas said. Still, it's the anniversary of the late king, so it didn't seem right to only have two royal family members attend. Your majesty is still recovering, 
So you shouldn't overexert yourself, Yasner said. The late king would prefer this over a simple ceremony. Oh, I get it. They're here to separate me and the prince. If they want to control the prince, having an adult like me around would be troublesome, the queen said. All right. I suppose we'll need to have a somewhat larger memorial ceremony then. Since I don't want to be the last one to find out again in the future, Yusner said. I should get back to work and talk to you more often. Don't you think you should rest a bit more? Why return to work so soon when there are no urgent matters to attend to, the queen thought. It's easy to tell what they are thinking. No, I've had enough rest. Since the plan has been foiled, there's only one method left. I have to face them the old-fashioned way, the queen said. I will see you tomorrow at the state affairs meeting, Lucas and Yusner said. Yes, your majesty, the queen said. Oh, and Duke Ferdinand, may I have a moment with you to discuss the agenda for tomorrow's meeting, Duke Ferdinand said. Yes, your majesty. Your grace. I was quite good, wasn't I, the queen said. I must admit, you handled it rather skillfully, although your tone came across as more assertive than Queen Gloria's. I'm looking forward to tomorrow's meeting, Duke Ferdinand said. Even though all the dogs will just be barking again. It will be difficult, noble conference room. Why go to such lengths for the common people? It's already annoying that lowly commoners are in this area because they've made some money recently, the queen thought. That's how he refers to the people who are the foundation of this country, Duke Ferdinand said. There isn't much to the meetings. The nobles will simply bark at each other, the queen thought. Now that I observe them more closely, it appears they aren't divided by genuine beliefs. Rather, they have come together for their own benefits, a member of the conference said. The law will remain as is. I will not allow an entry ban, another member said. That's unfortunate, but I suppose there's nothing I can do. However, perhaps it's time to consider appointing His Highness as the Crown Prince. It's something Your Majesty agreed to a while ago. Is there a reason to rush it? Her Majesty and His Highness are still young. Don't you think Her Majesty's marriage is a more urgent matter? The Queen thought. Ugh, we're back to that conversation again? I had already endured hearing this nonsense until my ears bled before I arrived here. I have traveled back in time more than 100 years, and still I can't seem to escape it, a member said. Your Majesty, please give it serious thought. In order for a country to be stable, its foundation needs to be strong. And for the nation's foundation to be strong, there must be a large royal family, Yusner said. We can't ask His Highness to produce an heir now, can we? The Queen thought. He just wants me to focus on that issue so I don't mess with his plans. Well, at this point, it's still best to give them what they want, the Queen said. It's been a while since I've been out of my chambers, so I'm tired, Yusner said. Yes, please get some more rest. I'll take care of the remaining matters and report to you, the queen thought. It seems he wants to have control until the end, the queen said. I'll get up first. But there is no way I'm allowing that. I'll consider getting married. All members became shocked and said, What did she just say? She's finally considering marriage. She'll surely get married to me, the next day. I heard the whole story. Is it true that you are considering getting married, your majesty? I believe that your majesty won't choose any of the idiots who choose to propose to you now. Why would your majesty do such a thing, when we have devoted our hearts to you for so many years, Queen Malaya said. How rude. The middle one is Lord Kraus, right? Would it have been better if the suitor was Chief Justice Gillian, whom Gloria likes? But that wouldn't have been possible anyway since he is the third son, Lord Kraus said. Your majesty, you are planning to select from among us, right? That will never happen, the queen, Serafina said. My lord, please watch what you say. Even if you're her majesty's cousin, you should not act so informally, Lord Kraus said. What do you mean? I just, Queen Serafina said. Please apologize to her majesty right away. Or do you want me to visit his grace? Lord Kraus said. I apologize, your majesty. Please forgive my rudeness. I'll accept your apology, Lord Kraus thought. Oh, this was unexpected. I can't be sure that she is my ally yet, but I definitely feel much better having her around, Queen Malaya said. Thank you, Serafina, Queen Serafina said. I did what I had to do for the dignity of the royal family. I'm sorry, your majesty. 
I should have stayed with you. No, it's all right since you came back. Oh, I almost forgot. Duke Ferdinand is here to see you. He said he had something to deliver to you, Queen Malaya said. Duke Ferdinand, what do you think about the matter of my marriage, Duke Ferdinand said. I prefer that you refrain from taking initiative. Your majesty will return to where you came from one day, so how could I approve of you turning an innocent man into a widower, Queen Malaya said. Aha, so that's why you're against it, huh? If so, how about you sacrifice yourself? You already know everything, so there won't be any surprises, Duke Ferdinand said. I politely decline. Why would I get together with a woman like your mage? Queen Malaya became angry and said. What? Duke Ferdinand said. Oh, hold on. I almost forgot to deliver these to you. These are marriage proposals addressed to you. News travels fast, huh? You announced it this afternoon, and look how many you received already, Queen Malaya said. Among these, which candidate did you pick? You already figured out my plan, Duke Ferdinand said. Why are you asking such an obvious question? As of right now, the most likely candidate is someone from House Jillian, but there is no way you're not going to take advantage of the situation. Moreover, if you didn't have an alternative plan, you wouldn't have asked me to consider getting married to begin with. Queen Malaya said. Wow, you are a much more brilliant person than I thought, Duke Ferdinand said. I'm almost considering becoming one of the candidates, Queen Malaya shouted. Just a moment ago, you said you didn't want to get involved with a woman like me. Hurry up and tell me about the candidate you chose already, Duke Ferdinand said. Then why don't you take a look at this envelope, Queen Malaya thought. This emblem. It belongs to House Lenoa. This should be fun. Perhaps it's because it rained, but the air is rather chilly. Queen Nalaya went out of the room and asked a knight. Sir, what is your affiliation and rank? The boy said. I'm Albert Ron Winter, a member of the third squad of the Royal Knights, Queen Nalaya thought. Is he the ancestor of the vice-captain of the knights that I know? Queen Nalaya said. Even though it's spring, it's chilly outside. I'm worried that you might catch a cold. I'll give you permission, so go and take a warm bath. Albert said. No, your majesty. I can't leave my position in the middle of my shift, Queen Malaya said. It's an order from your queen. I don't like seeing my people suffer like this, Queen Malaya said. See you next time, Sir Albert, Queen Malaya thought. I'll have to take a firm approach with the royal knights soon. I, Leonar Sulenoa, greet your majesty, Queen Malaya thought. He's more handsome than I thought, Leonar said. When I sent my marriage proposal, I never expected that you would invite me to the palace so soon. It's a great honor, Queen Malaya thought. His words are confusing. Is he saying that it's an honor because I called him here before Duke Gillian's son? Oh, yes. Or does he not know that Duke Ferdinand personally recommended him? Were you at the library? Yes. Since I arrived early, I borrowed a few books I wanted to read. A Love Bound by Fate. What a surprise. I didn't think a man like you would be interested in romance novels, Leonor said. When it comes to love, does it matter whether one is a man or a woman? I love every beautiful story. The wedding scene in this novel is particularly noteworthy, Queen Malaya said. Is that so? I should read it sometime. The Fundamentals of Commerce? It's a masterpiece that will still be read even 100 years from now, Leonor said. Do you really think so? Queen Malaya said. Of course. Money is very important, after all. I'm aware that most nobles despise commerce, but as we look into the future, they will soon come to realize the short-sightedness of that perspective, Leonor said. Don't you think that's an excessively extreme viewpoint? Queen Malaya said. No, not at all. It will be financial power that controls politics 100 years from now. After all, money is key to running a kingdom, and commerce is what keeps the wheels of finance turning. Treating a nobleman without financial resources as true nobility? That's sheer nonsense from those who fail to consider the future, Leonor said. Oh my. Even my family who share the same blood as me couldn't understand me. I never thought I'd meet a like-minded person here today, Queen Malaya said. Is that so? Just as I thought it's him. The man whose portrait I'll see 100 years from now. 
He made the nobles jump into the once despised merchant business and used the wealth he accumulated to make the Lenoa County as powerful as a duchy. If he is indeed that man, he is a key figure who will fortify royal authority a century from now, Queen Malaya said. Hmm. This isn't what I had expected, Leonor said. Pardon? What isn't? Queen Malaya said. I think I need to adjust my plan a bit. I'll start by introducing myself more properly. I'm Leonor Su Lenoa, the eldest son of House Lenoa. I am 24 years old, and I currently work as a level 5 bureaucrat at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs under the executive branch. You must be wondering why I'm acting like this all of a sudden, but I think this is how it should be. Please forgive my earlier rudeness in neglecting to offer introductions when we first met, Queen Malaya said. You don't need to apologize. It was also something that I silently allowed, Leonor said. Still, that doesn't erase my rude behavior. I have something to confess to you, your majesty. I actually have many female friends, Queen Malaya said. Oh, yes. I'm aware. I know about that very well. Count Leno was famous for two reasons. Firstly, he was an outstanding businessman, and secondly, he was a bachelor all his life who had relationships with various women. It's baffling to think Duke Ferdinand wants to attach this playboy to the queen, Leonor said. Even I feel a little hurt seeing your majesty laugh like that, Queen Malaya said. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that, Leonor said. In any case, it will not cause any trouble for you, so please don't worry, Queen Malaya said. Of course, Leonor said. I see my judgment was correct. You're very different from what the rumors say, Queen Malaya said. Is that so? That's because there's a completely different person inside this body. Actually, the real reason I brought these books was to figure out your preferences. Oh, of course, I wasn't trying to deceive you or anything. It's just a habit, Queen Malaya said. No wonder I thought we had strangely similar tastes. Then let's hear it. What have you found out about me, Leonor said. I think you are a very studious person with a progressive mind. Usually, the more noble a person is, the more conservative they tend to be. But your highness is different, Queen Malaya said. Hmm, how interesting. So, how many women have you seduced with this method, Leonor said. Pardon? Your majesty, Queen Malaya said. What? I'm sure your success rate is very high, Chloe came and said. Welcome back, your majesty. Did you have a good meeting with Lord Leonor? Queen Malaya said. Yes, he is certainly as beautiful as the rumors say. He was pretty enough to melt anyone's heart, Chloe said. Wow, is that so? I'm curious, Queen Malaya said. I'll call you as well the next time I meet him, Chloe, Chloe said. Really? Thank you, your majesty. But where are you going, your majesty, Queen Malaya said. To the Cloud Palace. It's still too early to have dinner, but I thought I'd go for a walk. The Cloud Palace from 100 years ago feels so different to me. Glory to the one who soars the highest. But how strange. I, Carl Runder, Chamberlain of the Cloud Palace, greet your majesty, Queen Malaya thought. Why did only the servants come out to greet me, Queen Malaya said. It's good to see you, Chamberlain. But where's the prince, Carl said. My apologies, your majesty. His highness overexerted himself yesterday. I have sent someone upstairs, so he should be here soon, Queen Malaya said. Ha! Huh. I know we don't have the best relationship, but he's still a member of the royal family. How could he humiliate the queen like this? It's all right. I'll go to him myself. Please lead the way, Carl said. This is his highness's room. If you wait here, I'll bring his high, a boy came and said. What? Who dared to come in without my purr? Good thing you still recognize me. I thought perhaps you had forgotten about me, Queen Malaya said. What do you mean? And what brings you here without prior notice? Our dinner appointment is not until later, right? I can't believe even a mere servant dares to disrespect me, Queen Malaya said. Let me give you a piece of advice. A servant who covers his master's eyes and ears is not worth keeping around, the boy said. Are you the one who didn't inform me of my sister's visit? Carl said. I am sorry, your highness. I merely, Queen Malaya said. I'll address this with you later. 
For now, please leave, Carl said. Yes, your highness, Queen Nalaya thought. Well, would you look at that? Although he could have done that just to protect the Chamberlain, Queen Nalaya said. Since you're so insistent, I will, the boy said. As a thank you for the advice you gave me, may I also say something to you? Even the cost of food is squandered on a dog that deceives its owner's eyes and ears, Queen Nalaya thought. It seems he has some idea of what's going on with the royal guards, the boy said. Thank you for the advice. I'll keep that in mind, Queen Malaya said. What a cute ancestor. I quite like him, the boy said. But what really brings you here? You have not come here since you ascended to the throne, Queen Malaya said. When I woke up this morning, it was raining quite heavily. It's easy to catch a cold when the weather is like this, wouldn't you agree? I didn't want you to come to me and risk getting sick, the boy said. What? Queen Malaya said. I thought it would be better for me to come here instead, the boy said. Since when did you care so much about me? Queen Malaya said. I'm sorry, but I find it quite detestable. The same goes for the crown prince issue. Do you know how much the ministers have been bothering me about that? Stop sitting on the fence and decide already, Queen Malaya said. So you want me to decide, huh? Do you want to be crown prince? The boy said. Well, of course, Queen Malaya said. Of course, the boy said. Don't test me. I'd rather you not scrutinize everything I say. You don't mean it anyway. I heard that you're accepting marriage proposals now. Who did he hear that from? In any case, it seems he's seriously interested in ascending to the throne, Queen Malaya thought. He has quite a lot of ambition, Queen Malaya said. I see. However, if you'd like to become crown prince, shouldn't you prove your qualifications first? Please focus on your studies for now. Who knows? You might become a great monarch one day, the boy said. Are you doing right now? Are you having fun messing with me? Queen Malaya said. Yes, it's a lot of fun. Oh, I believe it's time for my next appointment, Leonor said. It's been two weeks since I last saw you, Queen Malaya said. I'm sorry I wasn't able to keep my promise until now. As you are aware, I was handling a situation, Leonor said. It's all right, Queen Malaya said. By the way, you look exceptionally beautiful today, as always. Your beauty is almost dazzling, Leonor said. You're the only one who says things like that to me, Queen Malaya said. What? Why? You're such a beautiful woman. If I could, I'd like to ask you to be my partner for the banquet. But that would be difficult, wouldn't it? Queen Malaya said. The banquet? Leonor said. There will be a banquet commemorating the birth of an heir in House Fiori. It's coming up soon. Even though I'm not in their faction, I'm still the queen. I can't believe they didn't tell me, let alone invite me, Queen Malaya thought. What a joyous occasion. However, I can't be your partner, Queen Malaya said. How about something other than a banquet? Leonor said. For instance, Queen Malaya said. A card game, Leonor said. A card game. I had no idea your majesty was interested in such things. Do you know how to play? Queen Malaya said. I don't want to brag, but people tell me that I'm pretty good at it, Leonor said. Then will you teach me? Queen Malaya said. It's a fairly advanced skill, so I can't teach you for free. How about a bet? If you reach the tree at the far end first, I will teach you. But if I win, please grant me a wish, Queen Malaya said. All right. Let's do it. One, two, three, Queen Malaya thought. How long has it been since I last rode a horse? I feel so much lighter. It's as if I'm soaring through the air, Queen Malaya said. How refreshing, Leonor said. I arrived first, Queen Malaya said. Oh, right. I forgot we had a bet going, Leonor said. Do you feel better now? Queen Malaya said. Oh, yes, I don't feel that frustrated anymore, thanks to you. As expected, he understands my feelings so well, Leonor said. As promised, you have to grant me a wish, Queen Malaya said. Yes, a promise is a promise. I keep letting my guard down without even meaning to. You mentioned a card game earlier, right? Do you still want to learn how to play? Queen Malaya said. Yes, of course, Leonor said. If you spend a little more time with me, I'll teach you, Queen Malaya said. But earlier you said you couldn't, Leonor said. 
I declined because I didn't want to seem too agreeable. A guy who always says yes isn't very appealing, you see, Queen Nalaya thought. Ugh. I'm aware he uses lines like that with every woman, but I can't bring myself to dislike him, Carl said. Chief Justice Julian has been waiting to see you for half an hour, Queen Nalaya said. What? For half an hour? What a surprise. I thought his father or older brother would come instead. Why is he here? Leonor said. I'm not sure, your highness, Queen Malaya said. H.M., what should I do? Leonor said. Your majesty, how about inviting Chief Justice Jillian to play a game of cards? Queen Malaya said. Perhaps I should have just met them separately. You two know each other, right? Or should I introduce you? Lucius said. We were briefly introduced in the past, Leonor said. I heard that you became Chief Justice. Congratulations, Chief Justice Jillian, Lucius said. Thank you. The atmosphere is more tense than I expected, but I can't do anything about it now. Before we get started, does everyone know the basic rules? Queen Malaya said. Yes, I have played a simple card game before, Lucius said. Were you at a gambling house again? Although it wasn't just a simple game, Leona said. Well, then we'll go straight to playing a few rounds. And to make things more exciting, how about the winner receives a wish from Her Majesty, Queen Malaya said. Hmm, what should I do? What do you say, Chief Justice Jillian, Lucius said. If Your Majesty allows it, I'll participate, Queen Malaya said. Shall we play a game? I'm curious to know the level at which card games are played in this era. I have a straight, Lucius said. Two pair for me, Leona said. And I have a full house. Did I win again? Queen Malaya said. Oh, come on. You're taking all of our money, Lord Leonor, Leonor said. The world of cards can be cruel, your majesty, Queen Malaya thought. Pretending to be a bad player is harder than I thought. A few moments later, Queen Malaya said. You won this round, Chief Justice Jillian, Lucius said. Is that so? Now that each of you has won, tell me your wishes, Leonor said. I thought of a wish, Queen Malaya said. Really? What is it? Leonor said. Well, the thing is, Queen Malaya said. Would you give us a moment, Chief Justice Jillian? I'll call you right after I finish talking with Lord Leonor, Lucius said. As you command, Your Majesty, Queen Malaya said. Why is there such a tense atmosphere? Leonor said. No way, could it be? Queen Malaya asked. Pardon? Leonor said. Oh, never mind. Let me tell you my wish. May I have one more meeting with you, your majesty? Queen Malaya said. So you're saying you want a fourth date? The number of dates required for marriage is at least three. Therefore, requesting a fourth date usually means that they are considering marriage, Queen Malaya said. Fine. It'll make things easier for me anyway. At first, I tried to kill time by meeting all the candidates. But now that it's come to this, I suppose it can't be helped, Leonor said. I just broke out in cold sweats. I meant it as a joke. Why did you grant my wish so easily? Queen Malaya said. You shouldn't have brought it up then, Leonor said. I'll let it go this once. Now, tell me your real wish, Queen Malaya said. Well, the thing is... I'll be frank with you. Do you know how I earned the faction's recommendation? Queen Malaya said. No, although I do have a general idea. I know what you are thinking. But there is a bigger reason behind it. What is it? Leona said. Actually, before I was recommended as a candidate by the faction, I had a meeting with Duke Ferdinand, and we made a deal, Queen Malaya said. How dare you treat me as a prize in your deal, Leona said. My apologies, your majesty, Duke Ferdinand said. However, please know this, Leona said. If I had known what kind of person your majesty was back then, I would have volunteered unconditionally without the need for a deal. You're such an attractive woman, your majesty, Queen Malaya said. Anyway, so what is it you want to say, Leonor said. At the time, his grace presented me with three conditions. First, make sure that her majesty does not fall for the candidate from House Jillian. Second, try to become a strong candidate, but stall as much as possible so that the wedding does not actually take place. And lastly, don't even think about flirting with Her Majesty, Leonor said. Isn't the last condition surprising? I never thought His Grace would use words only commoners use, Leonor thought. Anyway, 
So the duke told him to stall as much as he could, Queen Malaya said. Then what do you get in return, Leonor said. The money I need to create a company. But is it all right for you to tell me this? Won't the duke cancel your deal if he finds out, Leonor said. These days, I think that might actually be better. He annoys me so much that I may shrivel up and die before I can even start my company. Every time I meet with your majesty, his grace summons me to repeatedly remind me of those three conditions, and threatens to take away the investment money. Do you know how much he bothers me? Queen Nalaya thought. Oh, I may be able to get him on my side easier than I thought, Queen Nalaya said. Would you like me to resolve your issue for you? Leonor said. Pardon? Queen Nalaya said. Then as I said, I will send the first round of investment funds to the company within three days, Leonor said. Thank you, your majesty. I'll be able to breathe again thanks to you, Queen Malaya said. In return, I would like you to deliver any items I request to the royal family, Leonor said. Of course, your majesty. You can count on me, Leonor said. If there's anything more you need from me, please call me anytime, Queen Malaya said. Oh, that's not necessary, Leonor said. Haha, <laughs> my apologies. I'll take my leave now. Infinite heavenly glory to the one who soars the highest, Queen Malaya said. Well then, is Chief Justice Jillian up next? Lucius Jillian said. Your Majesty, Queen Malaya said. I'm sorry to keep you waiting so long, Lucius Jillian said. No, it's all right. Your Majesty had a prior commitment, after all, Queen Malaya said. As you know, I am currently dating Lord Leonor, Lucius said. Actually, that is why I asked to see your majesty, Queen Malaya said. What do you mean? Lucius said. When your courtship with Lord Leonor ends as of today, please appoint me as your next candidate. The person sitting in front of you right now, Queen Malaya said. Is that Duke Gillian's wish? Lucius Gillian said. No, it's my wish, not my father's. I'm the youngest son of House Gillian. Therefore, I have the least amount of power and experience. That's why even though I've desperately wanted to pursue you for a long time, I had no choice but to watch my older brother court your majesty. I originally planned to tell you this after I was properly established as a government official, but I can no longer sit back and watch. If you give me the honor of being your husband, I'll offer the absolute loyalty of House Gillian to your majesty, Queen Nalaya thought. I never expected him to plead so desperately. What he's saying definitely sounds like a good proposal, but if it's a trap, I could easily lose my life. It's regrettable, but it's wiser to proceed with caution, Queen Malaya said. I'm not doubting your sincerity, but what you're saying sounds a bit strange to me. House Jillian is my maternal family. Therefore, isn't House Jillian already loyal to the royal family? I have no desire to come between two brothers, Queen Malaya said. And you have never even sent a marriage proposal, have you? Lucius said. I see. If that is your majesty's will, I will respect it. I apologize for unnecessarily taking up your time. For now, I will send an official marriage proposal. If you change your mind, please call for me anytime. Well then, if you would excuse me, Queen Malaya thought. It would be nice if his words were sincere. Although a bit risky, it's a pretty good solution to my problem. When I chose Leonor as my first candidate, the atmosphere among most members of the Queen's faction, including House Gillian, was quite tense. Moreover, the sensible third son is much better than the first son, who's more like a ruffian. But even if Chief Justice Gillian becomes the successor of his house, would he be able to take control of House Gillian? His eyes seemed quite sincere, but you never know what one's true intentions are. The first son versus the third son. A few days later, Queen Malaya thought. Speak of the devil. I didn't expect to run into both of them so soon, Lord Kraus said. It's been a while, your majesty, Queen Malaya thought. What nonsense is he going to spew this time, Queen Malaya said. Indeed, it's been a while, Lord Kraus said. It's been a living hell for me, though. Seeing that you can't answer me, I suppose you do feel a little guilty, huh? It would be difficult to handle if you were unaffected after trampling on the three years of love I dedicated to you, Lucius said. Watch what you say, brother. You're speaking to Her Majesty, Lord Kraus said. Be quiet. It's my business, so you stay out of it. 
Anyway, I have been feeling a bit better lately. Now that your affair is over, I'll be able to spend some quality time with your majesty soon, Queen Malaya said. My affair, Lord Krauss said. I can understand that you tried it once out of curiosity, Lucius thought. Does he truly think he can be the queen's husband when he talks to her like this? Lucius said. Stop it! You're being very rude to her majesty, Lord Krauss said. I told you to stay out of it, Lucius said. I will not, Lord Krauss said. What? Are you picking a fight with me? Duke Ferdinand said. Oh, there you are, your majesty. I see you're all gathered here, Queen Malaya said. Duke Ferdinand. For once, it's nice to see him. What are you doing here, Duke? Duke Ferdinand said. I have an urgent matter to discuss with your majesty, so how about we move to a more private location, Lord Kraus said. Wait, where do you think you're going? Her majesty was talking to me. Even if you're a minister, you shouldn't forget your manners, Duke Ferdinand said. Really? Then would you consider interrupting the conversation of a high official courteous? I thought you would know better than that, Lord Kraus, Duke Ferdinand said. Well then, would you follow me, your majesty? Queen Malaya said. All right. I'll see you two later. Leaving like this will put Chief Justice Jillian in a difficult position. I feel bad, but there's nothing I can do, Queen Malaya said. So, what's going on? Duke Ferdinand said. Actually, I have nothing to tell you. I was passing by and saw that you were in an awkward situation, so I took the liberty to step in, Queen Malaya said. What? Duke Ferdinand said. I believe I've already told you this before, but even if you're a queen, it's not good to come between two brothers. So he had something to say after all. What about you? You dared to set me up with the kingdom's playbill. Shouldn't you get an earful from me? Duke Ferdinand said. Is that so? For someone upset, you seem to be really enjoying yourself. I heard that you even rode horses and played card games together. You seem to like Lord Leonor a lot. Well, as you know, he understands women's feelings very well. But more importantly, Queen Malaya said, I have to pick the next candidate. I guess I should pick House Jillian next, right? Duke Ferdinand said. But dealing with the eldest son of House Jillian will be a headache, Queen Malaya said. Did I say I was going to choose him? Duke Ferdinand said. You're not going to pick Lord Lucius, are you? Queen Malaya said. I'm considering it. Why? Although we belong to different factions, he's a precious talent that shouldn't be wasted on your majesty. The only person who will ever rise to the position of chief justice at such a young age, Duke Ferdinand said, is Lord Lucius. Is someone talking about me? You are going back to your world in a few years anyway, your majesty, Queen Malaya thought. Don't turn such a talented person into a widower for no good reason. Ha, huh, that's what he was worried about, Duke Ferdinand said. Moreover, if you pick him, there will certainly be an internal conflict in House Jillian. Actually, that's a good idea. Pick Lord Lucius, Queen Malaya said. Why, do you benefit from them fighting with each other? Well, it's a win-win situation, Duke Ferdinand said. Your majesty doesn't like their eldest son anyway. It doesn't matter to him who it is, as long as someone from his family marries your majesty. Moreover, both factions have been on high alert, ever since you went to go see his highness, so for your safety, it would be best to make a decision as soon as possible, Queen Malaya said. In the current situation, wouldn't it be best to dangle a carrot in front of them? I'll keep that in mind, Duke Ferdinand said. Well then, I'll take my leave now, Queen Malaya said. All right. Keep up the good work, Duke Ferdinand said. Plopping down on a chair is against etiquette. Please be more careful next time, Queen Malaya said. I know that much, all right? Why is he always picking me apart? A few days later, your majesty, the palace has received top quality scented candles. How about changing the candles in your bedchamber? A maid said, they smell very nice. Queen Malaya said, is that so? A maid said, you're in charge of the bedchamber, so do whatever you think is right. Queen Malaya said, wow, really? Then I'll change all the candles today. Since the candles smell like roses, your majesty's favorite scent. A maid said, I think you'll be able to sleep better. Queen Malaya said, I sure hope so. Queen Malaya said, Now then, shall I read Lord Lucius' reply? 
Queen Nalaya read his messages. Your Majesty, thank you for choosing me as your second candidate. You don't know how long I've been waiting for this moment. I don't think I'll get any sleep tonight because I'm so excited about my date with you tomorrow. I look forward to the moment I'll see you again, Queen Nalaya thought. He seemed shrewd and cool-headed like his father, Duke Jillian, but at the same time, he also feels like a warm person. Even though I have seen him before, things will be different from now on. I have to carefully determine what kind of person he truly is, Queen Nalaya heard a voice. Why your majesty? His highness has gone missing. The guards search everywhere he could be, but they couldn't find him, Lady Serafina said. What did the royal guards say? They said they didn't notice anything strange, and they're also confused about what has happened. If he left the palace, he would have definitely informed the guards or servants. Then was he kidnapped by someone? I'd better go check, Queen Nalaya said. I have to go to the Cloud Palace now, Serafina said. Why your majesty? Please wait a minute. You're not fully dressed to go out. Did Duke Ferdinand kidnap Eddie? Why your majesty? Serafina said. To make up for the failed operation of Hide the Baby Eagle, Queen Malaya said. There's something I'd like to ask you, Duke Ferdinand. Did you also come here after hearing the urgent news? Duke Ferdinand said. It seems there's a more urgent matter here, Queen Malaya said. Sorry to keep you waiting, Duke Ferdinand said. It's all right. Let's get going now, then, Queen Malaya said. Yes. Oh, and take this, Duke Ferdinand said. Did it help? Queen Malaya said. Yes, thank you, Duke Ferdinand said. Don't tell me you're embarrassed, Queen Malaya said. Is that what you have to say to me in this situation? Duke Ferdinand said. In times like these, you need to appear as calm as possible. Nothing is for certain right now, Duke Ferdinand said. His Highness has disappeared? Is that true? What were the guards doing? Lucas said. Please be calm, Duke Fiore, Duke Ferdinand said. How can I remain calm right now? Stop talking nonsense. Explain to us what happened, Queen Malaya said. What happened? Lucas said. Greetings, your majesty, Duke Ferdinand said. Well, the thing is, we're not sure because the guards listed on the time sheet and the guards who were actually at their stations were different. And these people dare to call themselves royal guards? Queen Malaya said. Summon all members of the royal guard, including Marquis Erath within half an hour. If anyone's late by even a minute, I'll hold you all accountable, Queen Nalaya said to Lucas. Yes, Lucas said. Tell me what you know about Prince Edward's last whereabouts. I assume you'll be honest, since you deeply care for the prince, Lucas said. I'm sorry, your majesty, but other than the fact that his highness went to bed a little earlier than usual, nothing was out of the ordinary. By the time one of his servants visited his highness's room, he was already gone, Queen Malaya said. Does anyone do their job properly around here? Queen Malaya said. Forbid all staff from leaving the palace, and tell them to wait until further instructions, Queen Malaya said. Why do you look so displeased? Lucas said. Your Majesty, you shouldn't make such important decisions without consulting me first. The same goes for summoning all members of the Royal Guard, and giving instructions to the Chamberlain. All of those things shouldn't be decided on your. All of these orders fall within the exclusive authority of the royal family, Lucas said. I think you're the one who shouldn't interfere, Duke Ferdinand said. What do you think? I'm sure Duke Lucas just let his emotions get the best of him for a moment. I doubt he intended to infringe on the authority of the royal family, Queen Malaya said. Well, I guess we'll see about that, Queen Malaya said to Lucas. You have no right to reprimand the royal guards, Lucas said. Yes, your majesty, Eddie came and said. What are you doing here again, Gloria? Why is everyone gathered in the Cloud Palace? Oh, the two dukes are here as well, Eddie said. I visited my father's grave a few moments later. Is that true? Queen Malaya said. You really informed a guard on duty that you were going to our father's grave before you left? Eddie said. What do I gain from lying to you? The attendants looked very tired and were dozing off, so I didn't bother to wake them up. I didn't think it would be a big deal since I told one of the guards, Queen Malaya said. Anyway, I'm so glad you're all right, Eddie said. You seemed disappointed during the last memorial ceremony, Queen Malaya said. 
Is he saying? Eddie said. Don't act like you don't know, Gloria. I already know everything, Queen Nalaya thought. We've been siblings for over ten years. I thought it was a secret plan no one knew of. Did he catch on at some point? Well, anyway, Eddie said. Have I proven my qualifications sufficiently with this? Queen Malaya said. What? Wait, did he orchestrate all of this to give me an excuse to deal with the royal guard? Eddie said. Well, if my message is still unclear, I question whether you actually possess the necessary qualifications, Queen Malaya said. How ridiculous, Eddie said. Now that you have confirmed that I am safe, you can leave. Don't you have a lot of things to take care of? Queen Malaya said. All right. Rest well, Eddie, Eddie said. Take care. I won't see you out, Queen Malaya thought. Did I just get tricked by a 14-year-old kid? Not bad. I knew he was ambitious, but I didn't know he was capable of making such bold and strategic moves. Since he created this opportunity for me, I'll use it wisely, Lucius Gillian came and said. I brought these to commemorate our first meeting. I remembered how much you loved flowers when you were young, Queen Malaya said. Thank you. The flowers are beautiful. But they all look different. I asked for one of each kind, Lucius Gillian said. I couldn't remember which one your majesty liked the most. I'm sorry, Queen Malaya said. Oh, don't be. I'm touched by your thoughtfulness, Queen Malaya became glad and said. Really? Thank you, Lucius said. Well then, shall we talk about the future now? Queen Malaya said. The future, Lucius said. I don't want today's meeting to lead to any misunderstandings, Queen Malaya said. The fact that I selected you as a candidate does not mean that I fully accepted your proposal. I'd like to make that clear to you, Lucius said. Is that so? Regardless, Queen Malaya said. I'm just grateful that you chose me, Lucius said. I'll never forget this decision your majesty has made. Queen Malaya said. All right, then let's talk about the rest another time. I hope we get along well, Lucius said. Likewise, your majesty. Well then, my apologies, Queen Malaya said. What is that, Lucius said. It's a poem I wrote, Queen Malaya said. Or is it considered normal in this era, Queen Malaya said. You wrote a poem? Why don't you read it to me, Lucius said. Right then, Lucius read, beautiful you. Today again, I breathe for you. I opened my eyes to see you, and perk my ears to hear your laughter. Oh, my dear, you are my only lover, my only light, my only life, and my only happiness. I want to become a fence that surrounds you, a parasol that blocks the hot sun, Queen Malaya said. Enough, Queen Malaya said. I'm sorry, but I'll throw I mean, read that poem later. I want to read it quietly when I'm alone. Ha, it almost killed me. But how did you come up with the idea to write a poem? It couldn't have been easy, Lucius said. It's what you wanted, your majesty, Queen Malaya asked him. What I wanted, Lucius said. Yes, you told me so before, Queen Malaya thought. Gloria, you have such weird preferences, Lucius said. If it weren't for you, I would have never written a poem. Fifteen years ago, from the day I first saw you, I dreamed of sitting next to you, Queen Malaya said. What? Queen Malaya thought. He had feelings for Gloria all this time? So Gloria's crush wasn't one-sided? If that's true, things will get complicated. The person in front of him is not the real Gloria, after all. What do I do? Guards came and said. Glory to the one who soars the highest. Greetings, your majesty. We're reporting for duty, Queen Malaya thought. How refreshing to see them on their toes for once. Three guards on duty who failed to record the prince leaving the palace in their work logs. Absent without leave. Incomplete work log. Unauthorized change of work hours. One guard who left his position without permission. And two knights who changed their work hours without authorization from their captain were dismissed. Moreover, Marquis Arath, who was unaware of the situation despite being their captain, and the two vice captains who failed to properly fulfill their duties to protect the royal family were relieved of their positions and demoted to ordinary knights. New appointments would be based on work performance and attitude, regardless of one's age, status, or position. Past work performance would account for 50% of the evaluation, with the remaining 50% based on performance over the next three months. 
Those who were demoted were also promised the opportunity to redeem themselves, Queen Malaya said. Of course, I originally planned to dismiss those who were negligent in their duties as well, but there's no need to create even more enemies. This should have been done a long time ago, Lucas said. Greetings, Your Majesty. How have you been, Your Majesty? Queen Malaya said. How nice to see you, Duke Fiori. It's been a while since I've seen the rest of you as well, Lucas said. You weren't present at the meeting today, so I was wondering if you were all right. It brings relief to see you at peace, Queen Malaya said. Yes, I wasn't feeling too well. Thank you for your concern, Queen Malaya said. They probably think it's just an excuse, Lucas said. But is it all right for you to be out and about like this? If you wish to hold a royal wedding, you must pay closer attention to your health, the guard said. Duke Fiori is right, your majesty. Being out like this when you're not feeling well could be detrimental to your health. I'm sure the prince's faction is very displeased, since Duke Fiori close associate in the royal guard was demoted, Lucas Fiori said. Thank you all for your sincere advice, Queen Malaya said. And especially you, Duke Fiori. Today, and during the latest incident as well, you've been a big help in many ways, Queen Malaya said. Then would you excuse me now? I'd like to chat more, but I'm a little busy at the moment. I'll see you around then, Lucas Fiori said. By the way, your majesty, you smell very nice. May I ask what scent you're wearing? Queen Malaya said. It's Rose. Why do you ask? Lucas said. No particular reason. The scent suits you very well. Well then, enjoy your time, Duke Ferdinand said. Your Majesty? What's wrong? Queen Malaya said. It's nothing serious. I just dislike the scent of roses. But the perfume I'm wearing, the scented candles in my bedroom, and even this tea smells like roses, so I'm a little uncomfortable, Duke Ferdinand said. So that's why you don't look very well, Queen Malaya said. Yes, Queen Malaya said. Anyway, where were we? Duke Ferdinand said. I was telling you about the heavy rain damage expected in the Elza's territory. I heard that rainfall is usually heavier in Elza's and other territories near the border. How much damage is expected? Well, since the seeds can't be sown, the harvest will be poor, and there is also a high risk of landslides, so it's not looking very good. Above all, if the temperature rises any further, we must also be prepared for the possible outbreak of an infectious disease. Queen Malaya said, There was an incident where all of the high-ranking heirs died because of an infectious disease, so I think public sentiment is especially important in this matter, Duke Ferdinand said. Indeed. I see you were already aware, Queen Malaya said. How could I not know? I heard about it over and over again. At the time, I always complained to my teacher that he only talked about the era of Queen Gloria. Who knew that knowledge would come in handy one day? Queen Malaya said, Do you have any solutions in mind for this matter? Duke Ferdinand said, I'll immediately send relief supplies and personnel when I return home. Duke Ferdinand said, Your Majesty should just approve of the order while pretending not to know much. Queen Malaya said, Whose name is going to be on the order? Duke Ferdinand said, I plan to send it in the name of the executive branch. After all, sending it under the name of the royal family will only put pressure on you. Yes, since the nobles might protest. I have to protect myself for now, Queen Malaya said. All right, then let's do that. Was anything about rain mentioned in my lessons? I don't remember hearing a similar story. Even if only a few records exist about Queen Gloria's era, ID happened only 100 years ago. If there was such a big rainfall incident, there must be some record of it. Especially if it led to serious disasters, Queen Malaya said. Then can I assume that this rain is only temporary? Duke Ferdinand said. You don't look so good. If you're feeling unwell, I can call an attendant for you, Queen Malaya said. My body just feels heavy. Let's end it here for today, Duke Ferdinand said. Then I'll take my leave. I'll see you at the next meet, Duke Ferdinand said. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Wake up, Your Majesty. What are you doing? Put out those scented candles right now, Duke Ferdinand said. Duke Ferdinand, your majesty, Queen Malaya thought. What's wrong with my body? It feels like I'm sinking into a dark abyss, Duke Ferdinand said. You woke up, Queen Malaya said. What? Happened? Letitia came and said. His grace brought you here after you collapsed, Duke Ferdinand said. I was so surprised when I saw you, 
Duke Ferdinand said. Thank goodness his grace was with you. Queen Malaya said. Why did I collapse? Duke Ferdinand said. You mentioned that new scented candles were placed in your bedroom recently, right? I believe that was the cause. Aware of the fact that your majesty likes the scent of roses, someone made scented candles using a poisonous plant and sent them here. The poisonous plant Saliwa gives off a scent very similar to that of roses when burned. I recalled how you complained that your body felt heavy the past few days and guessed something was wrong, Duke Ferdinand said. It's such a common tactic that you probably didn't even suspect it, Queen Malaya said. I see. I don't have any concrete evidence, but it was probably Duke Lucas Fiore, who said, You smell very nice. May I ask what scent you're wearing? He must have been checking to see if I knew the scent of Salua. Duke Ferdinand said, All items entering the palace are under the jurisdiction of the palace staff. Serafina said, I should have paid closer attention. I don't know what to say, Queen Malaya said. Don't blame yourself, Serafina. It's not your fault, Chloe said. She's right. I recommended those candles to you, so it's my fault. If IT weren't for me, your majesty wouldn't have gotten sick. I'm sorry, your majesty. Queen Malaya said, No, why is that your fault, Chloe? And it's all fine, so you can get up now, Serafina. Serafina said, We should investigate the internal palace staff first. Queen Malaya said, The culprit may have left already, but will you deliver an order prohibiting everyone from exiting the palace grounds? Serafina said, Yes, your majesty. I'll inform the royal guards right away. Queen Malaya said, Please also bring me a list of everyone who touched my things this week. I'll start by investigating anyone on that list who touched items that can hold a scent, such as dresses, handkerchiefs, and perfume. Serafina and Chloe said, As you command, your majesty, Duke Ferdinand said, You sure act fast. Queen Malaya said, I can't afford to show any more weaknesses. I must find the one responsible for this. I thought I was defending myself well, but it seems I still got tricked. Queen Malaya said, Still, you saved my life with your quick thinking. Thank you so much, Duke Ferdinand said. I merely performed my duty as your subordinate. I was afraid of losing you, your majesty, Queen Malaya said. You were worried about me, Duke Ferdinand said. Of course I was. You are a very important person to me, your majesty, Duke Ferdinand said. I didn't want to lose my ally over something trivial like this. I still need you, Queen Malaya replied. That's why I'm important to you. Duke Ferdinand said. I'm just saying. I don't know who the culprit is, but they sure are bold. Or perhaps desperate. Probably both. The sudden news of a royal wedding must have put them on edge. So what do we do now? Queen Malaya said. First, I will get rid of anything that smells like roses. And then... She thought. Unless I establish my relationship with him. I can't be sure of my next move. That's good. You said you didn't like the scent of roses. Anyway, shall I try taking a risk? Well, I suppose I've built up enough trust with him. Now that the situation has come this far, I'll be frank with you. What I do next will change depending on your answer. Therefore, I'd like to hear your response first. Duke Ferdinand replied, do you wish to be in a position where you can exercise full power? Queen Malaya said. Rather than continue to be a prime minister in name only? Duke Ferdinand said. May I ask how things will change depending on my answer? If you say no, you'll continue to live as the head of the neutral faction that benefits from both sides. He added. And I'll remain a helpless queen until I return to my own time. If you happen to say yes, we will both assume the roles of queen and prime minister in the truest sense of the word. A few days later, a maid said, Your Majesty, I brought the tea you requested. Queen Malaya replied, Thank you, the maid said. If you need anything else, please call me. Queen Malaya said, So these are all the people who touched my things, huh? Let's see. What are their affiliations? As I thought, more than half of them belong to the prince's faction. She said, How little respect do they have for me to be this blatant? 
The reason I haven't replaced the queen's maids yet is because there was no guarantee that the new maids would be trustworthy and because I didn't want the nobles to notice a sudden change. But if this is how they're going to play, it changes things. She thought. It's time to replace all the staff, Queen Malaya said. I've been resting for a week due to the aftereffects of the poison. I feel stuffy because I've been stuck in my room. I heard that a festival is being held in the capital starting today. Isn't there a way for me to go outside for a little while? Perhaps a secret passageway. She thought. Oh, maybe it already existed in this time period. Just as my father showed me. It worked. My gosh, when was the last time I was out of the palace? She added. I'm going to have so much fun today. Who knows when I'll get another opportunity like this? She thought. Nice. Now, where should I go? I'll head over there first. Queen Malaya exclaimed. Duke Ferdinand. He's even wearing a wig this time. What's he doing here? Duke Ferdinand said. I'd better get out of here. Where are you going in such a hurry? He added. Why can't I get away with something just once? Queen Malaya replied. Did you just call me? I can't go back to the palace like this. Duke Ferdinand said. Don't try to weasel your way out of this. It seems you sneaked out. How did you manage to get out of the palace? I doubt the palace security is lax enough to let your majesty go out alone like this. Queen Malaya replied. Why are you asking such an obvious question? Of course it's a secret. Duke Ferdinand said. Then at least tell me when you plan to return. Queen Malaya replied. I'll go back before bedtime. Duke Ferdinand said. Before bedtime. All right, lead the way then. Queen Malaya said. Lead the way? To where? Duke Ferdinand replied. Did you really think I would let your majesty walk around by yourself? Queen Malaya said. Wow, there are so many people here. She said. Oh, that's... A man said. Are you interested, miss? Why don't you play around? You have to guess which of the five cups contains a marble. Queen Malaya replied. Sounds simple enough. I'll play. Duke, I mean, would you like to join me? Duke Ferdinand said. Fair? Sure, I'll have a go the man said. If you get it right, you'll triple your money. All right. Which one would you like to bet your money on? Duke Ferdinand and Queen Malaya said. The second one. The man replied. Not bad. You both got it right. Well, would you like to play one more round? Queen Malaya said. Hmm, all right. I'll double down this time. The man said. But it won't be so easy this time. I can't believe it. Who are you people? How can you get it right every time? Queen Malaya said. The score is 11 to 11, right? Duke Ferdinand replied. Were you keeping score? Queen Malaya said. You didn't know? Duke Ferdinand replied. Of course. Hmm, fine. Let's keep going. The man said. Stop it. I've had enough. You two are swindlers, aren't you? Get out of here. You're bad luck. Queen Malaya said. That's harsh, but all right. I was going to return the money I won, but I guess we'll just have to leave, fair. The man replied. What? Duke Ferdinand said. All right. The man said. Wait. Queen Malaya replied. Hey, mister. If you were a scammer, I was going to take all your money, but you're honest, so I'll give it back. I had fun, thanks to you. She added. What a pity. If we had played one more round, the score would have been 12 to 11. Duke Ferdinand said. And naturally, I'd be 12, right? Queen Malaya replied. What are you talking about? Of course I'd win. 
Duke Ferdinand said. I have a lot to say, but I'll keep it to myself. Let's play another game to determine today's winner. Queen Malaya replied. Then how about that? She added. I bet he can't beat me in that. This extremely sweet cookie made from hardened ice of fruit juice is a very popular snack among commoner children. Moreover, when you successfully tear off the pattern stamped on it without making any cracks. A girl replied. You get another cookie of the same type for free. She added. It's a form of entertainment that fosters a sense of challenge. Duke Ferdinand said. One more, please. Queen Malaya replied. Oh no, not going too well? Duke Ferdinand said. It looks like you've done this a lot. Aren't you cheating? Queen Malaya replied. Cheating? When did we decide on such a rule? Duke Ferdinand said. I guess you're not as experienced as I thought. Queen Malaya replied. Be quiet. Don't distract me by talking to me. She said. You know what? What? I think I just saw a judge who admires you around this area. She thought. He might still be nearby. Queen Malaya added. Why didn't you tell me earlier that Chief Justice Jillian was nearby? Duke Ferdinand replied. Do you care about him that much? Why are you so surprised? Queen Malaya said. That's not what's important. What if I get caught? Duke Ferdinand replied. That won't happen. It was someone you don't know. Queen Malaya said. But you just said. Duke Ferdinand added. I never said the person's name, did I? I only said that because a man in legal garb was staring intently at you. Queen Malaya said. Seriously, you were trying to disturb me on purpose. What are you going to do about this? Duke Ferdinand replied. That's not fair. I just told you what I saw. Do you think you can get away with it by denying it? He added. You're resorting to low methods because you don't want to lose. Queen Malaya replied. Whatever. Just don't disturb me anymore. She said. Don't you dare bother me again. I won't let it slide the next time. A girl said. Ma'am, one more, please. Duke Ferdinand said. You don't have to try again. Queen Malaya replied. You can quit if it's too hard. Come on. 